Today we're going to be looking at a cost-effective solution for your combi boiler if you're in a hard water area. So what we're going to be doing is fitting this combi mate on this combi boiler and I'll show you how it's done. How they work is they attract the hard water like magnesium and calcium particles and they coat them so they don't actually cling to any of the internal components of a heating system or any of the water system that you've got. This is especially important if you've got a combi boiler like the one we've got here. They've got what's called a plate heat exchanger in them which means the waterways are very narrow. If calcium and magnesium which is effectively scale can build up in those areas then you're going to get a problem with the plate heat exchanger in that boiler sooner or later. What combi mates do is completely eradicate the problem that you could have for that boiler in a cost effective one stop shop solution. So what we're going to do on this boiler here is we are going to fit our combi mate nice and low out of the way. We're going to try and keep it out of the way of this plug socket here as well but what I'm going to do once we finish this job is just give the electrician a buzz as well and just to make sure that that's all okay. So there's a few steps that I want to take you through when it shows you how to fit in one of these combi mates. They're really really simple and easy to fit but if you follow the instructions that come with them you'll be absolutely fine. They are set up for 22 millimeter and for 15 millimeter so make sure you buy the right one but today we're going to be installing it on this 15 millimeter copper pipe behind us here. So let's have a quick look firstly at the installation we've got here already and then ascertain and plan exactly how we're going to do this job. So the four pipes we can see up here going from left to right are the hot out, the cold feed in and then the flow and return for the heating system. If we look down we can see we've got a valve and also an anti-hammer device on our cold feed in so we know that we can isolate the cold nice and easily and then when we go further down we can see that our cold is attached to our filling loop. So what I'm going to do is the cold elbow that you see there we're going to sweat that off and change that over for a straight coupling and then where we were once going across on this cold feed here we're going to pop an elbow on there and point that downwards as well. Then we're going to set our two pipes over the top of the flow and return and then go further down to where we're actually going to fit the combi mate. What we need to make sure of when you're fitting a combi mate, make sure like I said look at the instructions but keep it 450 millimeters away from any heat source because if it does get too hot the um, combi foss pellets inside that we'll talk about in a minute will actually degrade quicker. You don't want to be changing your pellets over before you have to just because you put it right next to a heat source. So now what we know what we're going to do with the pipe work, I'm just going to show you the combi mate itself. The first thing you see when you open up the top of the box is a soldering warning, okay? Some types of plastic material may crack after prolonged contact with soldering flux. The acetyl body of this combi mate in particular must under no circumstances remain bearing any trace of any type of soldering flux. The scale reducer must not be installed in air in cupboards where the normal ambient temperature exceeds 30 degrees C. So number one, read the instructions. Don't do what most people do and don't read the instructions. Read the instructions on everything you do and if you read the instructions on this you'll find out that really you don't want to get any flux near the combi mate whatsoever. Secondly as well, the combi mates don't really like to be in hot environments so if you're going to put them in an airing cupboard make sure that the ambient temperature isn't over 30 degrees C purely because the warmer the ambient temperature the sometimes the quicker that the pellets can dissolve. These pellets should last easily a year but you don't want to dissolve your pellets too quickly purely because you didn't read the instructions and put it in a really hot environment. And the same goes for the 450 millimeter rule for keeping it away from hot things like this this radiator behind me or keeping it under the boiler because obviously heat rises and therefore it won't be so warm. We've got our combi Foss starter pack pellets but you can buy the replacement ones online easily. Make sure when you buy refills for this stuff that you buy the official proper pellets. We've got our little loosening tool for the nut on the top of the combi mate so I'll show you that in a minute. We've got some bedtime reading, make sure you read the installation guide, I will be in a sec. And then if we open this up we've actually got the combi mate itself. Let's have a quick closer look at the combi mate now. Firstly, non-return valve is fitted on the inlet as standard. There's a non-return valve inside every one of these. So if you've got a question right now about non-return valves on these, it's on the inlet, okay? So you don't have to worry about that. Secondly, really cool intuitive design here. When you want to take the cover off, you push these two bits in and there's two valves on the back that will automatically shut the water off. So when you come to change your pellets, you don't have water going everywhere. So then guys, I've got my combi mate out of the box and everything. I'm just going to pop it to one side now because we're not going to need it for this next section of the job. or well, not for a few minutes anyway. First thing I'm going to do now is switch the boiler off, make sure that the boiler is electrically isolated and also switch the water off, okay, turn the water off. It's easy for us because we've got a valve up there, nice lever valve, someone thought about this job and put that in, thank you. But often you'll find that your cold water valve is somewhere else, okay, so make sure you know where that is beforehand. Make sure once you've turned the valve off and you've got the water off that you open the hot tap, open every hot tap in the house 
and make sure there's no water coming out because if there is water coming out, you won't be able to do any soldering and you won't be able to move on to the next stage. Also for this job, I'm gonna to have to be really careful about getting water on that plug. I don't wanna to die today. So what I'm gonna do is find a way of making sure that we don't get any water on there or any splash because even once we've got the water off here, those two pipes run up that way. There's still gonna be a pipe's worth of water in there when I cut those pipes in a second. So I've gotta make sure we don't get any water on them plugs. So watch me cut the pipes, cut the bits out that we need to do and then we'll move on to the next stage. Right, so now that we've got our cold pipe towel, we now know that we can do a little bit of design work. I'm just gonna whip this off here. We've protected our plug under there from getting soaking wet. Bit of forethought helps, doesn't it? What we need to do is then figure out roughly where we are going to install our combi mate. We're far enough away from this radiator. I'm not too worried about these pipes here. I think we'll just pop our combi mate just here like so, and then we know where we have to pipe up to. Now looking at the back of the combi mate, you'll see they're very easy to pop these off. If you just press these two here, this front cover will pop off like so and then that'll expose the four screw holes that you'll be measuring up in a minute. So then we're gonna measure down 450 millimeters. Uh, I'm just gonna check this one here, perfect. No problems there whatsoever. So now we know that we're far enough away from the heat source and there isn't gonna be problems. Emma's just got home, she's not very well, but she's gonna make me a cup of tea. Actually no, I don't fancy a cup of tea, Emma. Nah, I'm all right, thank you. So as always, do the basics first. Still got a little bit of water coming out here. But just do the basics first, make sure that whatever you're going to work on, you're going to make level. So we're just going to run our plumb line across here. Now we've got our level there. And then we know that we can sit our combi mate just here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my spirit level measured down from the center line of this pipe. Because it'd be nice if we could just have to do a little set on that. Right, so now we've got our holes marked out, ready to go. All I need to do is drill and plug, screw this up, and then we can get our pipes measured up and popped in. It's also worth saying at this point that we've just popped a scanner on here to make sure that we aren't gonna nick any wires, and there's nothing down here apparently, so let's hope I don't die in the next few seconds. I pray to God my soul to keep. Right, so we temporarily got this beast in. What I'm gonna do is just clean my pipe down now, get all this pipe work cleared up. Right, so there we go. I've got the preliminary pipe work in. Now we know exactly where we need to go to. I'm gonna solder up, as you can see down here, I've got a little drain off, so if you get any problems later on or anything like that, or you wanna drain this lot out, you can drain this little leg here. And then I can show you how you can put your combi foss pellets in there and actually how one of these works. And then I can tell you how you can win one of them. Right then, so we've got our combi mate installed now. We've got all these nicely soldered up, all nicely cleared off. We've ensured that if there was the slightest flex of flux or anything like that going on here, we've taken that off as well. There's not been any problems there. We've also been nice. We've thought about anyone else who's ever gonna come here. We've put a drain off here, so anyone can turn that valve off there and then drain everything off from here if they leave the combi mate in, and then they can take this out. So now what I'm gonna do quickly is just quickly flush this through and make sure it's all okay. And then I'm gonna commission the combi mate for use. So the first thing we're gonna do is screw on our dome again, make sure that our little cap at the top is at the top. Uh, also, if you're doing full system protection, that means that you're putting this on the cold feed into the whole house, then leave this shelf out. If you're doing single appliance protection, like we are now, so we've got a single appliance, being the boiler and the hot water system. What we're gonna do is pop this shelf in, and that means later on when we put the pellets on, we're only gonna put approximately 400 grams worth of pellets, meaning half of this. Those pellets should last a year, which shows you how long the pellets can last overall. A refill, if you buy a refill bag, could easily last you a couple of years. So let's pop this in now.
many different combinations in which the combi mate can be fitted. In order to keep the filler plug upright, it may be necessary to rotate the dome relative to the base and relocate the divider tray. So we've got our combi mate installed, we've got the water back on, we've tested for leaks, it's all fine there, and now we know that the hot water side of this system is protected by a combi mate. That means that we're not gonna get any problems with the plate heat exchanger on this boiler anymore, and also means that the internal components on the hot water side of this system will also be protected from scale. Right then guys, so everything's done now, I'm just gonna put these in the van, and remember to hold tight. See you later.